Hey, welcome back. I'm Sean Barr, and at Looking Point, we help IT organizations make decisions around collaboration, security, and networking. A common question we get from our customers is, how do I install Cisco ICE? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you get all of our content as we release it. And this is a Tech Talk. So the next question I have for you around ICE is, you know, we get a lot of questions around just general deployment, general installation. Can you take us through what, you know, a general ICE deployment would look like? What the, what you know, what the method is to, to install it? Yeah, yeah. So um, forgetting about the size of the deployment for for a moment. So if you're doing one node, two nodes, or fifty nodes, um, just the general process of getting to the GUI, right? So I so I can start um, doing things with ICE. Um, will first depend on whether or not you're deploying a physical appliance, right? So I bought the hardware from Cisco, or if I'm deploying a virtual appliance. So I'm bringing my own compute and I'm spinning up a, a VM running ICE. Um, so in the in the former, you know, where I bought the hardware appliance from Cisco, it's going to come pre-installed with a version of ICE that was generally available at the time of the purchase. More often than not, you know, you buy the you buy the hardware. And by the time it gets to you and you're ready to, to deploy, it's it's a month or two later, there's probably a new software rev. So I, I generally just start by re-imaging those ICE appliances with the base release that, that I want to deploy on. And you can only install ICE on a base release, right? So the way ICE software revisions work is they release a base, like 2.7.0, for instance. And then they'll patch from there. We patch one, patch two, so on and so forth. And those patches are... Um, cumulative, I think is the right word. So patch seven includes everything patch six did, patch five did, patch four, three, two, and one. Um, so ultimately you want to install the base release and that's what um, you'll, you'll install using an ISO image in the hardware appliance. It's a Cisco UCS server, right? So we'll connect to that Cisco integrated management controller. We'll launch, launch that virtual KVM. We'll map that, that ISO image and we'll boot to it and, and let the, the base release install. Um, there's a setup wizard that we'll walk through um, where we'll input host name, IP info, DNS servers, NTP servers, um, and create our first user account. Um, after, after you enter that setup wizard and the server reboots, uh, you'll be able to log into the GUI. Um, and from there, um, you know, away you go. Awesome. No, that, that's, uh, that's exactly what uh, I was looking for. I think that's what people are looking for, just where do they start. And, and you mentioned mostly hardware appliance. Can VMware, or sorry, can ICE be deployed in a virtual environment like VMware? Yeah, so um, VMware, um, Hyper-V, KVM, um, pretty much everywhere except um, cloud native right now. Okay. So there's no native uh, AWS image. There's no native Azure image. Um, or um, what do they call it? GC, GC Google. Yeah, the Whatever. Google. There's no uh, the Google. Yeah, the Google one. <laughs> there's no, there's no Nate, the Google one. There's no Google yeah. one either. Um, so as of release 3.0 in ICE, you can deploy in VMware on top of AWS or VMware on top of Azure. Um, I hear it's a pretty pricey solution to run VMware in those um, in those clouds, but it is it is an option now for those customers who have to have it running in AWS or or Azure. Um, and the install process is largely the same, uh, except instead of connecting to the Cisco Integrated Management Controller to install the software, you're going to be connecting to whatever your hypervisor product is to to install the software. Um, and then you can still use the the uh, ISO file to install. The, the virtual appliance, you'd have to make sure you got the compute and the CP, or the compute and the um, or the CPU and the memory and the and the disk size correct to match the the supported OVA size that you're trying to deploy. If you were going to install from the ISO, um, but also um, as opposed to installing from the ISO, Cisco provides the OVA, which is the whole shebang, right? So it's got the um, OS and application included in the OVA file with the correct specs based on the size of OVA that you chose. So you can just download the OVA, load that up into your hypervisor, tell it to, to install the OVA, and it'll boot up to that 
uh, setup wizard screen where we walk through entering the basic network information, reboot, and GUI pops up. And again, both of those methods take you to the base version of whatever release you installed. So 2.7.0, once I get into that GUI, from there, I can use the GUI to simply apply the latest patch for that release, which is gotcha. generally recommended. It's always nice to be running the latest patch. Yeah, especially if you're building from scratch, you may as well patch it. Yeah. Um, patch it awesome. Up. I hope that you learned something from it today. And if there's anything that we said in this video or anything we didn't cover in this video that you wish we did, make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you like and subscribe so you get all of our content as we release it. And we will see you on the next Tech Talk. Thanks for watching.